and welcome to Little Like Cat Podcast. Uh, this is episode nine, can you believe it? Nine uh, episodes, which means 18 weeks now I've been coming to you and uh, rambling at you about my different knitting creations. So this is a knitting podcast primarily, sometimes there's a little bit of crochet, um, but it's very much a yarny podcast, mostly, as I say, about knitting. My name is Amanda and I am talking to you this morning from Derby in England, uh, sort of pretty much the mid middle of England. Uh, it is Sunday the 8th of August and fairly typical August British weather. It is raining quite heavily. I am in my little garden office so um, it is possible if the rain gets very heavy we might even be able to hear it on the flat roof. Um, hopefully not but uh, it's raining quite heavily out there at the moment but if it really comes down you might hear it. All right so you can find me on Instagram as little Lycac Yarn. I am on Ravelry as Lycac66 and you can email me at littlelycac at gmail.com. I've been knitting for over 30 years, um, I'd say on and off, more on than off, um, and I learned to crochet I don't know, about five or six years ago maybe. So today I have got quite a lot to show you um, and talk to you about. I have got um, uh, some finished objects, I have got some whips that I've made quite a lot of progress on, I've got a um, new cast on, I've got quite a lot of acquisitions, we've got the make-along winners to announce as well, I have drawn those this morning for the Christmas and July make-along. So yeah, there's a lot to talk to you about and get through. Um, if I've got time at the end, I'll do a little bit of life updates, we've just been on holiday, things like that, but I'm only going to do that at the end because I want to get straight into the knitting stuff for those of you that are here just for the knitting stuff. So I know what that can be like, sometimes you turn on a knitting podcast and you're 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes in and they've not even talked about knitting yet. So I'm going to put the non-knitting stuff at the end. Right, so I will start with finished objects and I have got three finished objects. Two absolute 100% complete finished objects and one of my little cheaty finished objects. Okay, so the first one, and I'm actually really pleased we've got all of these finished. The first one to show you is the uh, Scribbly Gum Socks that I was working on in July. These were my July socks for the Rainbow Sock Chronicles, so they were done in blue. And they were also part of the um, Handmade Sock Society by Helen Stewart. Um, her company is called Curious Handmaid and she uh, has, every year I think she does this, and it's the first year I've participated, um, she releases a set of, I think it was six patterns, sock patterns, one a month, um, and you can buy them all together or you can buy them separately after they've all been released. I actually took the plunge and brought them all together. It was a mystery um, set so I didn't know what they were going to be like and I have knitted four out of the six. <clears throat> There's a fifth one that I do intend to knit, which is the B one, um, and there's a sixth one um, which is toe up, which I don't intend to knit at the moment because I don't do toe up socks. I've done one pair of toe up socks, didn't really enjoy the experience. Maybe uh, I will have a look at them at another point, but they're not in my uh, queue to knit. Anyway, these are the Scribbly Gum Socks. And I did have them finished, <coughs> not by the 31st of July, but by the 30th of July. Because the last time I podcast, I said I wasn't sure if they were going to get finished or not. Well, I went on a bit of a mission and the second sock knitted up really, really quickly. Um, I am now on school holiday. Uh, I'm a teacher, so I am now on uh, the summer holidays. Uh, I've got five weeks holidays this year, two weeks already gone. That definitely helped, though. That meant I could get the second sock knitted much more quickly. I, I really really like these as well, they are beautiful. So they've got a lovely sort of cable pattern down the front um, and uh, although I say cable I think it was all done with twisted stitches pretty much. Um, so you're able just to sort of knit one behind or hold on the front so I didn't have to even bother using a cable needle uh, with these. So they, yeah, they knit up really quickly. The yarn, which is beautiful, is from Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit Yarns, a uh, yarn that I bought from them last summer. I think the colourway was called Doors and it was in their sale last summer, so I don't know if they've still got this colourway uh, at all. It's really, really pretty though, and I really am happy. And I kind of got my sock mojo back. Um, if those of you that know, my June socks got lost. 
uh, and I almost felt like just kind of giving up on the whole Rainbow Sock Chronicles and everything. I got really quite upset about it. Um, but anyway, having finished these, that's kind of given me my sock mojo back and I am really, really happy with those. And um, I then did straight away cast on my blanket square, um, which is the from the Radvent Throw um, pattern by Amber O'Brien. Um, I will put all the details for various things in the, um, no, I'll put them up on the description actually, um, on screen and some of the stuff I'll put in the description notes. Um, okay, yeah, so straight away, cast this on, knitted this in the car, actually the majority of that got knitted in the car on the way down to holiday. We uh, went on holiday to Somerset, just got back, that's why this podcast is up a little bit late. I normally try and record the podcast on the Friday afternoon and get it up on Saturday morning. It's We didn't get home to Saturday lunchtime, which was yesterday, so I'm recording this morning on Sunday. Anyway, so yes, so most of that got knitted. It was quite good knit, um, uh, car knitting because I know the pattern really well now because that is square number 16, I think, which also means I am uh, up to date um, and I, my Christmas in July pledge to myself was to get up to date on my Radvent throw blanket. The idea is that you knit the squares with 20 gram minis from an Advent set. I'm knitting them with um, leftovers from all of my four ply or fingering weight projects that I'm using this year. So yeah, that's two finished objects then. Scribbly gum socks, and my advent square because you know I'm cheating and calling these finished objects. Uh, I've got all the others that I had blocked the other week still on the back of this sofa so I thought that one needs blocking but I'm going to add it onto there. So yeah I think I've got 16 completed. Oh, I'm going to keep showing you these because I just think they are lovely. So yeah so I said that gave me my sock mojo back and I took some yarn with me on holiday to cast on the August socks um planning on doing the lavender fields sock because the color for august um as far as i knew for the rainbow sock chronicles was purple so i had the yarn picked out uh planned on taking doing the lavender field socks and casting those on when we were on holiday anyway got to the first of august which was sunday and i thought right cast those on and i looked on the thread that so the rainbow socks chronicles is uh, a make along that is being hosted by So Sweet Violet and Lay Family Yarns jointly. And I thought back in January when I kind of first joined in with this that August was purple. However, they'd been a bit more specific and said lavender. And then uh, and sort of made a point that lavender should be kind of like a bluey purple. And I was like, oh, the purple I've brought with me is not a bluey purple. What shall I do? Shall I wait till I get home and go through my stash or my uh, yarn from my shop and pick out something that's more lavender? Um, shall I see if I can find something while I'm down here in Somerset? So that's what I decided to do. I thought, all right, I'll wait and see if I can find anything in Somerset. We did go to a yarn shop. There wasn't anything appropriate. And then I realised that outside the cottage uh, where we were staying was a tub of lavender. And the lavender um, flower on that bush was not a bluey purple. It was much more, well, very much like the shade of purple yarn I had brought with me. And I thought, oh, do you know what? Let's just get these cast on and start. Um, and the yarn that I had got with me was this. Because the other thing was I had also this month there at the start of the um, Rainbow Sock Chronicles, I had said that I was going to try and knit as many of the pairs out of stash as I could and only buy yarns for colours that I hadn't really got and I've pretty much stuck to that um, so anyway yes yeah, so I decided I was going to stick to using this purple because the lavender outside the cottage where we were staying was that colour um, and I even took a photo to kind of show that um, I had two balls of this um, and expected to use maybe one and a half but as you can see I still have a whole ball left um, because I mean these are slight kind of short they're not really shorty short socks but they haven't perhaps got quite as long a cuff and also this yarn is 55% um, wool 30% nylon and 15% bamboo and it is a hundred grams no sorry this is 50 grams and just this 50 grams is 260 yards. So you do seem to get more meterage. Um, so yeah, I got the whole, both socks out of this, out of one 
50 gram ball. So I haven't blocked them yet. I've got these on slightly different. Uh, so these are the lavender field socks and I have got two. I completed these. I didn't start them until the 3rd of August and I finished them yesterday, the second sock yesterday on the 7th of August. So it's got to be the quickest pair of socks I have ever knitted. Now I haven't blocked them. The cuff is this Pico edging, which is a, done with a Pico cast on, which I've not done before. I've done Pico edgings before where you kind of knit some rows, do some yarn overs, knit two together and fold it over. Um, but this was different. This was a, a, a Pico cast on, which I've never done before. And it is really pretty, but it folds over. And I've seen on the Ravelry group, uh, the Curious Handmade um, Ravelry group, a few people commenting on that. Some people say they blocked it out. Some people said then that they cast on again with smaller needles. I didn't have smaller needles with me. I only got the, had the needles I took. So I thought I'd try and block it out. But actually, I quite like the way it folds over like that. I think that looks quite sweet. So I'm not going to block it out. I, I'm going to keep it like that, like as like a little fold over. Um, so, yeah, literally down to when I kitchened the last sock uh, yesterday, I had about that much yarn left. Obviously, it wasn't an issue. I'd got a whole other ball, but I got them all out of the one ball, 260 metres or 260 yards, is it? Um, so those are the lavender field socks. Um, they are really pretty, really sweet. I am very pleased with them. The yarn actually, it, it's weird because I've not even worn them yet. I don't know how well this yarn is going to wear. I think it's going to not felt, but perhaps bobble quite quickly. It already feels like it's bobbling just from knitting on them. But uh, yeah, they're really, really sweet. So that's my second finished object. And now I've got a quandary because I've got the whole of this skein left. And of course, I should be doing another square from this yarn. And there's part of me thinking, oh, do I want to break into this to do this? But I think I will because then I can, I'll still have maybe 35 grams of this left. I can put it in swaps, give away um, things like that maybe, um, or just use it for a bit of colour work with something else or scrap it onto a scrappy blanket. So I think I will break into it and do another square. Else I'm going to run out of yarns. The whole point of my blanket is to use yarns that I have knitted things from this year. So it becomes a memory blanket as well. So um, this yarn I think is discontinued. I bought this on holiday. It was a souvenir yarn from when we went to Florida in 2010. So yes, I've had this in my stash for 11 years. This is how much I stash yarn. Uh, it's partly as well because I went through, I had about four years where I didn't knit as much and I definitely didn't knit socks for about four years. Uh, so my sock yarn didn't really get touched. So it's partly to do with that. <coughs> um, partly because uh, yeah, I had a period where I didn't knit as much, wasn't, uh, didn't have time to go on Ravelry and just a bit of a difficult time in my uh, in my life. Um, so anyway, so this was originally from Florida and it was just like um, a yarn from a shop called Joann's, which forgive me if you're American and I've got this wrong, but from what I remember Joann's is kind of like a big craft, big craft store, a bit like in this country, a bit like hobby craft. Um, and so it's called Bamboo and New Sensations. It is discontinued. Um, but so, so as I say, I am trying to knit through some of my stash yarns and certainly use stash as much as possible for um, the Rainbow Sock Chronicles. So those are my finished objects. Okay, I'm just going to pause, take a quick finish my coffee. Um, I will edit out the gulping because nobody wants to hear that. Okay, so those are all my finished objects. Oh, I haven't done what I'm wearing. Obviously, I'm not actually wearing any knitwear right today, but normally on the back of this sofa, I normally have this blanket and somebody uh, left a comment on the last video asking about this blanket um, and had I talked about it before in any of the podcasts, which I hadn't. So I thought I will just, instead of what I'm wearing, I'll just do this as a bit of a throwback to something that I have made previously. So, and actually this came up on my memories today, on my phone memories, that I had finished this a year ago today, today or yesterday. Uh, so now seems a good time to talk about it. So this is a crochet blanket. Um, and last year I did a couple of crochet blankets. I did three in total, I think four in total. Um, and one of the blankets I did was called the stash busting blanket. 
by Coastal Crochet. Um, the designer name for that, I think I've got her name, I want to, Eleonora, but I can't remember what her surname is, but Coastal Crochet. Um, and so I did the stash busting blanket by her. In fact, I did two of those last year, one for my daughter and one for my mum and dad. Um, and she had also got this design, but it was only sold as a kit and it was called the Late Summer Sunset Blanket. Um, and I think it's the Knitting Network had it as a kit, but they didn't have it. They just did not have it in stock every time. And I thought it was lovely, but every time I tried to order the kit, it was out of stock. Um, and you could only get the pattern by buying the kit. You, there was no way of buying the pattern independently. Um, so I decided to look at the, at the um, blanket very carefully and deconstruct it. And um, I got acrylic, I got cheap acrylic in my stash and bought a couple more of balls of cheap acrylic just to make up some of the other colours in it. Um, and kind of worked it out for myself. Now I felt a little bit guilty doing that because this was somebody's pattern that I was effectively copying which I didn't really like the idea of. So I went on her, uh, well I emailed her actually and said do you have anything, um, do you have any way I could um, give you some money, to, uh, do you have anything on your website where I can give you some money uh, because I'm use, effectively using your pattern even though I haven't got the pattern. And she'd got a Kofi account, one of those, uh, Kofi. so I um, donated to her Kofi account um, as a way of payment for the pattern because I didn't feel good about just kind of. Um, anyway, so I did, I, um, so it's got bobbles, it's got shell stitch, um, it's got a sparkly yarn that I put into it. I don't think it's where the light's coming through, it's blowing out. Um, so, and I just kind of did repeats and then I did a scallop edging. So, um, basically because I've done her, sea, uh, her seaside stash busting blanket, that had got most of these stitches in it. Um, and so I used the information off of those stitches to help me do this. Um, I think the shell stitch I did made a bit smaller and things like that. So generally speaking though, generally speaking, it was certainly all techniques that I had learnt through the stash busting blanket. Um, and I love this, I really love it. Um, I don't think my family were too keen on it, but I think it's gorgeous. So that is, um, the kit is back in stock on the knitting network and I don't think it's very expensive either because like I say it just uses um, sort of, uh, it's not Stylecraft acrylic that one, um, it might be the knitting network's own um, acrylic yarn and I think it's less than £20 for the kit. Uh, so yeah it is the Late Summer Sunset Blanket uh, by Coastal Crochet but you can get the kit <coughs> with the pattern and the yarn on the knitting network um, and you can see. Okay, so that's that blanket. So yeah, kind of a sort of made by, well, not designed by me, but I kind of worked out the pattern. Um, but as I said, I did then pay the designer because I felt bad otherwise. Right, okay, so that's my finished objects. That's kind of my, what I'm wearing, but previous project. Okay, whips. So while I was on holiday, I did manage to work on um, the uh, whips I had from last time. Um, and get quite a lot of work done on those. So firstly I'm going to show you the cable vest that I'm knitting um, and if you remember this is using the Jaeger Extra Fine Merino Aran that I bought in a charity shop for 50p a ball in this beautiful raspberry pink um, and I took I think four or five balls of this away with me, um, not all the yarn that I've got, um, and I got through most of what I took with me. Um, so last time you saw this, I think I had done the back shoulders and the one first part of the front, and I'd still got the second part of the front to do and then to join it in to get to together. So this is how much I've got done now. So I have knitted on this a lot um, over this last week. Now, I'm gonna tell you, um, I know I gauged, I think I'd swatched it for gauge and knew that it was roughly right. 
um, and you need four and a half mil needles and five mil needles. So the five mil, most of it should be knitted on the five mil needles, and then you just use the four and a half for the back edging, I think it is, or the ribbing at the end, no, the ribbing at the bottom. Anyway, I was knitting away on it, and it did feel quite tight when I got it into um, putting it onto the circular needles. It kept feeling tight over the needle that I was knitting off of. And I looked in my project bag and um, looked at the needles I've got in there, the smaller needles that I've used for the ribbing. And I looked at them and I thought, they don't look the same size. One of those looks bigger than the other. Now bear in mind I'm on holiday, I haven't got all my um, notions with me, so I haven't got my uh, needle gauge marker thing to check. So then I looked at the two needles on here and thought, oh no, yeah, one of these is bigger. And the bigger needle was the needle I was knitting off of, and the smaller needle was the needle I was knitting onto. So I realised I was knitting this on the wrong needle, but I had done pretty much all of this, and I thought, oh, I don't want to um, rip back all of this. Uh, I checked the gauge, and I was one stitch out, so I've got 19 stitches per um, 10 centimetres instead of 18, so it's not massively off, but I thought, yeah, that'll probably be a needle size difference. So there is part of me worried that it might turn out a little bit small. I haven't tried it on because I need to put it onto I need to put it onto a bigger cable or I, um, so I might try and do that and try it on um, because I'm a bit worried that it's going to be a bit too small. Having said that, I do have a tendency quite often when I knit things to knit things too big for myself, so it might be okay. And I'm going to be honest, I really do need to lose some weight and I'm planning on really trying to, I, I've put on a lot of weight the last year and a half since COVID started. Um, I've put on a lot of weight, in fact, I stood on the scales this morning and yes, anyway, I don't, I don't want to talk too much about weight loss and, and things like that, but I will be attempting to lose weight again over the next few months. So, um, yeah, I think before I knit any further down there what I might do is put it onto a bigger needle a bigger cable so that I can try it on and just check uh, because my plan is that I want to be able to wear this over a shirt at work um, so I think I'll put it onto a bigger cable double check that I can at least squeeze into it now because if I can squeeze into it now then hopefully when I've lost a bit of weight it will fit fine um, so I'm reasonably confident that it will because it's not massively out of gauge um, and as I say for some reason anyway I always seem to over um, a lot of stuff I tend to knit always seems to be a bit on the bigger side rather than the smaller so so that uh, you can see it's got a cable pattern down the front but you only do the cable crossover once every 18 rows so it's mostly pretty much just plain knitting that's been done in the car when we've been driving to places on holiday or every evening tv knitting a few glasses of wine it doesn't matter because well, apart from obviously i made the mistake with the needles um, but you know you can just focus uh, there's not much to focus on you just have to remember to do a couple of purl stitches either side of the cable panel uh, but you can feel that anyway so so I've made really good progress on that um, and hopefully after I've tried it on that will be finished by the next time I see you because um, well I've only got two more balls of yarn left anyway so um, yeah and it's quite knits quite quickly so fingers crossed that will be finished and that I don't try it on and cry because it's way too tight um, so that's been worked on a lot um, over the last couple of weeks and then last time I saw you I had just cast on this lace yoke tee um, and this is from a oh I didn't say about the pattern um, I'll put I'll put it up on the description so you'll see it anyway um, so this is the lace yoke tee and this is a commercial pattern by Yarnspiration Designs and last time I saw you I think I had cast on done the rib and maybe the first couple of rows of lace that was all um, again I've managed to get quite a lot done on this oh, actually, I, so I think I've got the progress keeper actually where I've got to so I've done quite a lot of the lace to be fair uh, but now I have done even more I've got all the lace I have split for the sleeves 
This shows like a lime green on the screen and it's a little less bright than this it shows on the screen. Um, it's hard to describe, it's a bit more leafy than um, it shows on the screen. But I am liking this so far, I must admit. I said to you last week, it's a free pattern. I wasn't sure about how well this kind of yoke design would look on me and my body shape. Um, as I say, I've split for the sleeves. All it is now is a case of stocking stitch um, the body. And then um, obviously a few rows for the sleeves. And I think that it's quite short sleeved. I've got the pattern in here. It's really, really screwed up. Um, so yeah, it is very short sleeves really. There's only a few rows to do for the sleeves and some ribbing. Apologies for the crumpled mess. That is the uh, design. Um, so I am actually really quite liking this now. I was, I think I didn't seem very sure about it when I saw you. When I, uh, I wasn't sure about it, but I am liking it more. I think it will be just a comfy throw over top. I don't know, it certainly wouldn't be one that I'd wear to work, but just a comfortable throw on top. Um, the yarn that I'm using for this, <coughs> excuse me, the yarn that I'm using for this is a Lana Grossa yarn. The light is coming through so strong in there. Lana Grossa, uh, and it's Linea Pura Latte, um, which is 85% cotton and 15% milk protein. It's a worsted weight yarn. I think I put that in. Yeah, worsted weight yarn. Um, and so I think I'm knitting this on four and a half mil needles. Um, so I am actually, I do like the uh, lace pattern um, and I'm liking how this is knitting up. Be curious to see what the neckline is like. I don't like too small a neckline. You can see I prefer sort of like looser uh, necklines so we'll see what the neckline is like for it but I think it will give me a good idea as well if I like the neckline because it's going to be a bit higher up if I'm happy with that and I'm happy with how the yoke sits on me then there are a few other patterns I've got in my queue um, um, that are paid for patterns um, that I might actually buy <coughs> once I know whether this sort of style looks okay on me or not so yeah, I'm actually quite happy with that. It's going to make quite good, again, TV knitting, car knitting, evening knitting. I'm really into sweaters at the moment, actually. I've got quite a few sweaters, cardigans that I want to knit um, that I've got in my queue and um, that I've got the yarn for and things. So I'm really into sort of sweaters and tops at the moment. So that is uh, my second work in progress. Uh, so. Talking of sweaters, jumpers, cardigans, whatever you want to call them, I have got a new cast on as well. Um, and I talked about casting this on a couple of episodes ago. Um, and then I had gauge swatch for it. It's the Ranunculus by Midori House. And I'd done a gauge swatch and wasn't happy with, I'd got two lace weight yarns that I was holding together. And I said that I thought I should add mohair into it, but I was debating that. And then, as if by magic, uh, I took part in the wool in wool swap and got sent two skeins of really soft mohair. Um, um, but I still didn't cast it on because we had that really, really, really hot spell of weather. And it sounds tough, but I did not fancy trying to knit with mohair. I just wanted to knit with cotton and, and socks and things that were really lightweight and I wasn't gonna get really uh, sweaty hands. And even just the thought of winding mohair in that heat, I couldn't even bear the thought of winding it up even. Um, but I have now wound it. This is the mohair wound up. Um, so it's lace weight mohair and it's from Yarn Garden. Um, and it is, I don't really know much about these, uh, this company, uh, but it's 75% kid mohair, 25% nylon. And it is this beautiful purple. And I've got two skeins of it because they were 50 gram skeins. 
Um, the colourway is Temple, it says Juniper, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be Juniper. Um, because some of it is um, in a different language, so I'm not sure. Although on here, yarngarden.co.uk, so it sounds like it's a British company, but then some of the um, label is written. I don't know what what um, language, maybe Spanish or Italian, I'm not sure. Anyway, so I'm putting the mohair with these two yarns, and this is 100% silk. It is so beautiful. This was again bought in Florida in the 2010 holiday and this is 100% merino also bought in Florida. Um, so these two combined with the mohair and I'll show you what it's coming up with is for the ranunculus. So this one I've got written down what it is is Blue Ridge Silk Shimmer Lace. It is so so pretty. And this one is Italian, I think. Fiatre di Closa Cento Kento La Yeah, anyway. 100% merino lace. And this one was very, very expensive. And this one was very, very cheap. <laughs> and then I've got the mohair added into it. I cast this on last night. Um, I'm casting on for the wider neckline. Having said that, I don't like necklines too high up. Um, and I did do the twisted cast on that it said. It's one of those things is, again, that's another reason why I had put off casting this on. I had seen people say they had just used the standard long tail cast on and that was fine. Um, but because I particularly wanted the wider neckline, I wanted to use the uh, cast on that it said. Um, it did say to cast it on loosely. I don't know actually that I cast it on that loosely. However, so I've got the short rows done and I've just started on the beginning bit of the first bit of lace. I'm sure all of you have seen the ranunculus uh, jumper. Every time I see it, it catches my eye, every single time. So Instagram, uh, YouTube, anytime somebody is wearing, and that, this is the amazing thing about this jumper is you don't always realize that's what it is because it looks so different depending on what yarn you've used because it's a pretty, it's, it's knitted with so much positive ease that you can knit it pretty much in any yarn you like. Um, and it's one of those that you see it in a different yarn and go, oh, that's a nice jumper, what's that? Oh, oh, it's the ranunculus. Oh, oh, I like that jumper, what's that? Oh, it's the ranunculus. And that's what I kept finding every time I kept seeing people wearing this jumper. And now I have got to the point where I kind of go, I think that's a ranunculus um, because it just looks so different so I can see why people knit more than one um, because I'm already thinking okay this is going to be very lightweight and wispy um, but maybe with a worsted weight yarn it might be for winter with the long sleeves anyway let me show you how this is knitting up with it all three yarns combined so that's the cast on. You can see, actually, I think it is quite stretchy. Very loose, actually, the ribbing. And then it is knitted at a very, um, uh, a very fine gauge. So it's at 14 stitches per 10 centimetres. Now, again, I tried to swatch, but I do know that swatches lie. When I tested this out, it was coming out at 14 stitches over more like eight or nine centimetres. But then when you kind of pulled it out a bit and I thought well, yeah when this is blocked and it's going to so and it comes with so much positive ease anyway so if it is a bit smaller I don't think it's going to matter and I've just started the lace on it so it is very very soft with it being mohair it's got that real halo um, and I really do like the way the colours because it's kind of muted the um, colours in that which I wanted it to do because I um, when I had looked on Ravelry and seen this yarn knitted up just straight as it was I didn't really like the variegation of it and it, 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 it was too much too busy so I think adding in that and the mohair has really muted it and I actually really like it so that's the ranunculus it's not going to use I'm going to think it's going to be it will be the short sleeve version um but I, I might do it down to here rather than right up here so cover up 
some of this. Um, and then I've got to decide, because again, I'd like to knit a blanket square. So I'm trying to decide whether to knit two blanket squares from it and double that, and then double that to do a blanket square, or whether just to hold those two together. I might just hold those two together because I'm worried that um, doubling, because that's 100% silk, I'm worried that it will, it won't block out right or will, that square won't sit right. So I think I'll just hold those two together and just do one square um, from it. Uh, or I could hold these two together and do one square and I've, if I've still got enough, hold these, these two together, it's 100% merino. Um, so do one square that is just that and one square of that combined. I don't want to put the mohair into it though. Um, so that is the ranunculus. Yes, I have finally cast that on. Uh, it's on six mil needles. I am hoping that it will be a reasonably quick knit. Um, I'm hoping to have all three of these sweaters finished before I go back to school, which is three weeks. Um, so definitely I should have the cable vest done first. I have a feeling that that might get finished second and I'll probably still be working on the green one when I see you in two weeks time. Um, and then, um, but yes, hopefully by the time I podcast next, the pink vest will be done. This I hope will be done. Um, I don't know whether it's going to be one of those that once it gets to the body and it's all just stocking stitch. I know there's part of me that goes, kind of goes, well, that's quicker. It's just stocking stitch. But sometimes though, then it gets a little bit tedious as well. So it depends. Right. So those are works in progress and my new cast on. Um, we come to acquisitions and I have got quite a lot of acquisitions to show you. Um, so I was watching, whose podcast is it? Oh, Leslie from Not Enough, Not Quite Enough Yarn or Not Quite Enough Distance. I was watching her podcast before we went away and she mentioned an Etsy seller who is witchcrafty lady um, and she sold yarn and some sewing stuff but basically she had a sale on for most of her yarn because she was moving away from the yarn stuff and more into the sewing stuff onto her Etsy shop. So um, Leslie mentioned her having a sale and I thought well you know you got to support other um, Etsy um, shop owners. I thought I would have a look and she'd got quite a lot of DK weight and she'd got um, a set of DK yarns that I thought was a really good bargain. She'd got it reduced and it was two skeins of that, two skeins of that and two skeins of that as a kit. So two of the green, the purple and the grey. And I thought, oh my goodness, that would make a really nice colour block or striped, nice sort of chunkyish sweater for the winter. So I ordered it. And it was a really good price. And Leslie had mentioned that she seemed to be popping in some extras as well. If you were in the UK and therefore it wasn't going to cost her too much on shipping, she was popping in a few extra bits. Um, and I didn't really, I kind of heard that, but didn't expect anything uh, that much. Um, so yeah, so I've got two skeins of the grey, purple and the green. This is in Falkland Poledale and it does feel really, really soft. Um, I'm not sure I would want to wear it completely next to my skin, but I think over a t-shirt it's going to be absolutely fine. So yeah, so just with the six skeins of that, it's 50 grams, so about 200 metres each I think, I thought I should have plenty to do a nice big striped or colour block jumper. But the lovely, I think her name's Alma, not only sent that, but she sent two extra skeins um, of the same yarn um, in these two colours and I think they will go as well. So I have been looking for a sweater pattern to adapt. I think uh, it's really difficult. So I, I went and looked, so I googled sort of stripy jumpers just to, to look at styles that I liked and I saw a pattern, not a knitting pattern, but a jumper, a commercial jumper, I think it was something like Shein, but I liked the way it was striped and it was a drop shoulder sweater, um, but I think it had quite a high neckline and so I prefer a lower neckline. Um, so then I started looking for knitting patterns that were drop shoulder in DK weight, um, but with a lower uh, neckline. 
uh, and I think I've got two or three possible ideas. Before I go any further though, by buying a pattern, I am going to swatch this because looking at the thickness, I don't know, it might come out more of a worsted than DK. So I'm going to swatch with it on four mil needles and check if it comes out at, it might be more uh, 20 stitches than 22 which would make it more worsted. Just looking at it, it looks a slightly thicker DK, but I'll test it out. And then um, I'm gonna buy a pattern or, or find a free pattern that, is got the, that has the right design of the actual jumper, and then I'm gonna stripe it. Um, now that's not gonna get cast on till probably September, October time, because that's going to be a very warm, thick jumper. I had considered doing some kind of intricate color work, um, and I've said before I can do colour work, I have done colour work, but I think I prefer colour work with just a couple of uh, um, colours because otherwise te my tension gets really bad. I did a really intricate colour work sweater cardigan for my daughter when she was two. It was before I started using Ravelry and I can't find any photos of it, but I do remember that some of the tension in that was a little bit dodgy. Um, so I'm thinking just striped or colour blocks really rather than doing anything too intricate on colour work. Um, but something maybe where I can put all of these colours together. I think that's going to be really, really lovely. So thank you very much Alma if you are watching. Uh, so yeah, her shop is uh, on Etsy. It is Witchcrafty Lady. She has still got stuff in her sale. I would recommend going and having a look. These were an absolute bargain. So that's my first acquisition. Um, secondly, oh, talk about rabbit holes. I am terrible for going down rabbit holes. Right, so trying to knit from stash and um, trying to thinking of trying to do another summer weight um, top before the summer goes. The rain is coming down now as well. Um, I had thought I'd gone to my stash and I had got um, a whole load of this, which is Sirdar Just Bamboo, which is exactly what it says, 100% bamboo. And I have got 12 balls of this. Because it is 100% bamboo, it's very, very stretchy. And I know that um, they can stretch out, it can stretch out shape. So I wanted to find a pattern that was designed specifically for this yarn because I was worried that if I tried to use a pattern that was just for general DK weight yarn, uh, in fact actually I think this is perhaps worse, more worsted than DK, I was just worried uh, that it was going to stretch out shape and not look right and I also thought it needs to be something, a pieced pattern, not because uh, the seams will help to keep it in shape as well. And I had, I think when I bought the yarn, I had bought a pattern that I looked at it and again it was probably quite a few years ago and I looked at the pattern and I thought I don't like that anymore. It's a cardigan which was kind of um, buttons up here and comes down low and, I, and it had quite a big lacy pattern and I didn't like it and I thought I don't want to knit that cardigan but that's the only pattern I've got um, that's made designed for this yarn. So I went and I looked for other patterns um, designed specifically for this yarn and I found this on, on eBay. Um, I found this pattern, which is obviously actually that colour, and I thought, oh, I like that best. I like it, you can see here, with the sleeves, the little capped sleeves, um, and it's got this kind of scalloped edging here, and the little capped sleeves have also got that scalloping. Um, so I thought, right, I'm going to buy that pattern to knit with this yarn because it's designed, you can see, it's actually designed for just bamboo and sure enough it actually tells you in the instructions. Um, this garment is designed to be very close fitting and will stretch to fit, uh, as shown in the photographs. So, you know, it's telling you there, do not knit, uh, knit it oversized and it will stretch. Um, but this is where the rabbit hole. So the new acquisition partly was this pattern and I really must get this cast on uh, ASAP because else I'm not going to get a chance to wear it uh, this year. But while I was looking on eBay, um, somebody was also selling this pattern, which I like. 
but not with the frill. That frill would not look right on my body shape, but I've double checked the, the pattern is, um, the frill is added on afterwards, so I'm just gonna knit it without the pattern. But there was a lady selling this pattern with the Just Bamboo <laughs> in the pink, and I ended up buying that as well. So what was supposed to be stash busting, buying the pattern so that I could use this that was already on my stash, I ended up buying another pattern with the pink <laughs> as well. So that is really, really pretty. I am going to knit that in the pink as well. So, um, and then if I've got anything left over, I don't know, I might then look at the cardigan pattern again or we'll see, or just get rid. Um, so those will, don't know which one to do first. Which one do you think I should do? The ribbed, kind of lacy or the plain? Let me know maybe in the comments below, which one do you think I should knit first? The lacy sleeved t-shirt or the plain um, t-shirt? No frill, I am not doing the frill. Let me know in the comments below, which one do you think I should cast on? The ribbed one in the stone color or the plain t-shirt in the pink. Okay, let me know in the comments below. Um, and because when, as soon as I've got one of the other sweaters finished, um, this will be cast on next. So uh, hopefully in the next week. So if you comment before, um, let's say next Saturday, um, I will then do a tally up um, and maybe I'll pop it on my Instagram stories as well as a poll um, and then we'll see which one wins the stone or the pink, the uh, 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 ribbed top with the lace or the plain top. Okay, right, don't confuse me by telling me to do one in, in, in do that design in a different colour. <laughs> Let me go with what's there. Right, okay, I still haven't finished my acquisitions. I told you it was going to be a long one today. Um, I also won a giveaway uh, from Amelia X Joy. I often talk about her um, Etsy shop because I buy project bags from her. She was doing a little giveaway on her uh, Ravelry, no, on her Instagram, um, and I entered it, and she gave away quite a lot to, to different people. She sent me, as a giveaway uh, winner, she sent me a Needle Cozy, <laughs> those rainbow cats, aren't they cute? a yarn cosy and a couple of stitch markers. I can't find where I've put the other stitch marker. It might be uh, in my notions. Uh, I think it's quite a nice idea though, because look, it's got the lobster clasp on one end and a ring on the other end, so you can use it either way, which I thought was a clever idea. So thank you very, 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 very much, Amelia, from Amelia X Joy on Etsy. Um, they will all get used. Then while we were on holiday, as I say, I like to have a look around for yarn shops uh, while I'm away. Um, unfortunately, I didn't find anywhere selling any indie yarn. I would have loved to have been able to buy something from a local dyer or designer. Um, and we didn't go anywhere that had um, any indie yarns. Where we were staying in the village, there was an alpaca farm and I got quite excited because it was described as an alpaca studio. And then when I contacted them and the lady didn't have any yarn, she had some, um, she did have fiber and she did have felting stuff, but she didn't actually have any yarn to buy. So that was a bit of a shame. Um, so we went to one shop and it really was just full of commercial yarns. Um, she had some sock yarn, opal sock yarn and King Cole zigzag. And she'd either got colours that I had already got, I've got a few King Cole zigzag, or all the opal ones were quite dark colours and not really my thing. Um, we bought some crochet cotton for my daughter, who's got into crochet recently, and just as we were going, she'd got a, you know, like a bin of um, sail yarns, odd balls, and uh, there was a ball in that, and it was all falling apart, you know, uh, uh, all the yarn was coming away from it. And it caught my eye, I've re, um, rewound it. And it's actually um, from, is it, I pronounce it Shoppel, Shoppel, um, Crazy Zauberball, which is, although it's a commercial yarn, I know it's quite, um, quite a popular sock yarn. 
um, and in these colours, which are very, very me. You've seen me with these colours before. Um, and it was in the reduced bin as well. So it was down to £7. Um, so I was like, I'm having that anyway. I've had a look now on Ravelry at how it knits up and it kind of knits in quite wide fade stripes. I don't like when I've looked, it's got a very bright pink in there as well. I don't like when I've seen people have just knitted this plain as a sock. But I do like it where people have used it in colour work and it fades. And I've got an idea of what I might do with that. Probably not in the near future. But what I love about it is I bought that on holiday. So when I knit with it, it will remind me of my holiday. So a little bit like this, even though it's 11 years later, it has memories attached to that holiday. And then the fact that I knitted those socks with it on another holiday, so many memories attached to, to knitted items, isn't there? So that will have the fact that I bought this in that yarn shop with my daughter. Um, so I will have memories of that holiday when I knit with it. And then also we went to Cheddar. Uh, you may have heard of Cheddar, well, I'm sure you've all heard of Cheddar Cheese. Uh, Cheddar Cheese originates from a village called Cheddar in Somerset. And it's also famous for Cheddar Gorge, a big, um, gorge where you can go up the cliffs and walk along um so we went there and they had got a haberdashery and again no indie yarns nothing uh, no sock yarn at all but um i've fallen in love with a shawl pattern that i think i am going to try and get this cast on quite soon as well because i'd like to enter it for a shawl make along that is being run by Ruth Loves to Knit, so the lovely Ruth from the podcast Ruth Loves to Knit. If you've not seen her podcast, check her out. Now she is she lives in um, Cornwall, I think, rather than Devon, or the Devon-Cornwall border. Um, and she lives in England, and she is running this make-along with Fernanda from, I think her podcast is called Monkeys and Me, or something along those lines. Again, I'll, I will double check it and put it down below. Um, and so they are doing a shawl make along called Across the Pond. I have to think about it because she's in America, Fernanda is in America, Ruth is in England. So they've called it Across the Pond Shawl Make Along. Um, and I saw a really, really beautiful big shawl called, hang on, I've got it written down. Always Better Together. And that was a mystery knit along shawl. Um, that was hosted by River City Yarns. They've got a podcast as well. And it's knitted in cotton, 100% cotton. Um, and I have got cotton and I was looking to see if I got anything that I thought would work in my stash. And I wasn't 100% sure. Um, and the cotton that I'd got in some of the colours I thought would work, it was kind of a mercerised cotton. And again, I wasn't 100% sure how soft that would be for a shawl. Um, so when I was in the shop, wool shop in Cheddar, I picked out, I looked, they've got a, um, a commercial yarn called Cotton Soft by King Cole and it really is incredibly soft and it's 100% cotton. Uh, now that shawl I was talking about, can, you can knit it in either DK weight or fingering weight. Um, obviously it's going to come out bigger if you're doing DK. This is DK and I got two skeins of oh, balls of it in this raspberry pink. This is, I've just realised, really, really similar to that vest top. <laughs> and then two in this sort of more purpley pink, because you need two contrasting colours for this uh, always better together shawl. Um, so I'm going to knit it in these, which part of me thinks will be kind of autumnal. They had got a more plummy pink, which is what I really wanted to go for, but they've only got one ball of that, which wouldn't have been enough. So I've wanted to go with the plummy pink. Um, but I still think this could work for autumn colours. So I'm going, and I think their make along finishes at the end of September. So I've only got about six weeks to knit this shawl. So I'm gonna get that cast on really soon as well, actually, um, to try and get it knitted by the end of September so I can enter into that shawl make along. But I will put up some pictures of the Always Better Together shawl. I think it is stunning, absolutely beautiful. Um, but I say it is knitted in cotton, so I'm going to knit it in those colours. Um, since I bought these, I realise I'm going to be slightly, because that's going to be my main colour, that's my contrasting, um, and I think I'm about 50 metres short, um, but they've got different edging 
option so I'm hoping that the meterage or yardage that they've given is for the one with the uh, the most fancy edging and if I go with a simpler edging hopefully I will have enough yarn um, so yeah I think that is going to look really lovely together maybe that's not everybody's idea of autumn but um, anyway gonna have that, get that I need to get that cast on soon right so I now need to do the giveaway winners for the Christmas in July make along. I can't believe I'm at 55 minutes already. So uh, this morning I closed off the thread in Ravelry and I went on to the little ICAC, uh, the LL Christmas in July make along hashtag on Instagram and picked out the winners. Um, and I did that at about nine o'clock this morning. So anything that has been posted on Instagram after nine o'clock this morning won't have been entered into that draw. And I locked the thread on Ravelry. So we do have a Ravelry group. Um, I was really, really uh, pleased. There were about 130 um, hashtag posts with, uh, the, with the hashtag. Now I know some of those were my own tags and obviously <clears throat> I didn't include those in the draw. And then on Ravelry, again, it was about a similar number. I think it was 128 posts, something like that. Um, and I did a random number generator for both the hashtag and for the Instagram. Um, sorry, the hashtag on Instagram and the Ravelry group. Um, so on Instagram, straight away, the one that came out um, was on Instagram it was Jenny D 40 and she had put on Instagram a pair of really brightly colored Christmas socks that she had started in December last year <coughs> and then I think they'd been hibernating and, and she had finished off those socks so Jenny D 40 um, if you email me at like hack, no little like hack at gmail.com or you can contact me on Ravelry messages or Instagram messages um, and send me your details then you will uh, I will send your prize to you and then on the Ravelry group um, I picked out uh, I think it was no, post number 128 and that was Helen Midget Jen and her winning post on Ravelry was as uh, she'd cast on a ranunculus in a beautiful red uh, and she's using a red mohair and red yarn um, for Christmas um, and so her ranunculus cast on was the winning um, post in Ravelry so Helen Midget Gem again if you contact me and just to say then that the two winners one of them will receive these two yarns okay which was the Shetland um, red and the um, uh, wool nylon um, stripes so one of you will receive this and then the other one will receive the shawl pattern um, <clears throat> if you've got a preference the two of you if you've got a preference to which prize let me know if you both want the same one then obviously I'll just have to do it 50 50 or toss a coin or something but if you have got a preference and it works out that one of you would prefer the sock yarn and one of you would prefer the um, um, other prize which is this so the second other prize is the stitch markers with the bag from, and uh, also the shawl pattern from uh, Penny Baker Knits, which is the gingerbread house shawl pattern. So the stitch markers bag and shawl pattern is one prize. If you would prefer that, let me know. And the other prize is the yarn. If you prefer that, let me know. If you both prefer the same thing, I will just have to toss a coin. Okay. So that's the giveaway winners. Congratulations to you two. Um, so next episode will be episode 10. So I am going to do a giveaway for episode 10. Um, and I've just, I did a little bit of dyeing before I went on holiday and I dyed this as a one of a kind. I was just having a play actually. I do really like it. Um, so that will be for episode 10. I will give some information about how you can win that uh, sock yarn that one of a kind sock yarn just very quickly before I go shop updates um, you may have seen obviously as I, I was away for a week so I wasn't um, sending anything out I've got a few orders to get packed today that will go out first cast tomorrow um, but 
on sun today, this, uh, Sunday the 8th of August, I will be doing an update later today. Um, and I've got a few, I don't think I've shown you this one before. This is, I dyed it a few weeks ago, but never got, haven't got around to putting it in the shop. It's called Sweet Like Candy, and that's on my soft sock base. Colours are blowing out really badly. So that's got a pink and greens and yellows. There's two skeins of that going into the shop, Sweet Like Candy on the soft sock, which is 75%, 25% merino and nylon. I've also got this one, I think I've got three skeins of this. This is called Moroccan Sunset, a little bit more autumnal. Okay, and that is also going into the shop today. That's on the luxury yarn, and so that is 85% merino, 15% uh, nylon. And then Romeo and Juliet is my Shakespeare play for August. Um, and I've got two yarns that I've dyed for this already. And I've shown Juliet already on Instagram. I'll show you her again in a minute. Um, but on the soft sock, the 75% uh, merino, 25% nylon, this is Montague. Um, and so this is, I would call it a pinky red. Um, it's, yeah, a pinky red rather than a red red. Um, and that is Montague. Two skeins of that going into the shop today. And then Juliet, which is just so, so pretty. I am really, really happy with this. This is a new base for me. This is a silk base. So it is 25% mulberry silk and 75% merino wool. It is, you can see the shine on it. I mean, it doesn't help anyway that they, uh, they are. If I hold it up like that, it's a bit better. So you can see it is a pale, pale pink and then it has got some yellow in it. Uh, so it has also got speckles. It, when you uh, wind up a skein, sometimes some of the colours and things get hidden. So I'm going to open it up for you. So you can see the majority of it is pink. And it's almost like a um, very pale pink sorbet. And it kind of goes into peach in places. Now there is some yellow, but that's not a dominant colour. Okay, there is some yellow, but... Uh, and then there are some speckles and you can see, I don't know how long you can see, it's got some darker pink splashes and speckles and it has got a few grey speckles as well. So just very light speckles, you can't see it's, it's the light, but, um, but I think you can see it in the photographs. So there are three skeins, I did, uh, I dyed, I did three skeins of this, took it to Newark Market and um, it sold out straight away. One lady bought all three skeins straight away, so I had to re-dye it, uh, which is great. So I've re-dyed it. There are three skeins of this going into the shop today as well. It is absolutely beautiful. Um, if you did buy it all together, I would recommend um, alternating. If you were knitting one um, garment with it, I would uh, recommend alternating the skeins because they will not be uniform because that's the nature of hand dyed, hand dyed yarn. So three skeins of Juliet going into the shop today as well. Right, okay. Um, I'm not going to talk about anything else because we're over an hour. I did think it would be a long one today because I've got lots to tell you about just knitting wise. Um, thank you so much. If you have got to the end of the uh, podcast and you're still with me, thank you for sticking with me. I hope uh, you like all the new projects that I've got um, and all the different things that I've been knitting on. Um, if you get a chance, as I say, please let me know if you think I should, uh, which of the bamboo tops I should cast on, the pink or the stone. Um, and yeah, thanks ever so much for watching and I will see you again in two weeks time.